In this video, we're going to talk about problem number 520 from Scanna, the algorithm design manual. It's right here. Given an undirected graph G with n vertices and n edges, and an integer k, give an O of m plus n algorithm that finds the maximum induced subgraph H of G, such that each vertex in H has degree greater than or equal to k, or prove that no such graph exists. Uh, so the first question is kind of what does he mean by this problem? In order to understand that, let's choose an integer k, let's say k equals 3, and we'll look at a particular graph. In this case, this graph right here that has 12 vertices and 20 edges to it. And uh, <clears throat> what we're trying to do is trying to figure out uh, basically which vertices of this graph we, could we need to delete in order to make sure that the remaining vertices of the graph all have at least three edges. That is, the remaining vertices of the graph all have degree at least k, where k equals, in our example, 3. Uh, so we could immediately look at this as you know, just human beings and not computers for a moment and say, OK, well, this edge, uh, this vertex, number 6, is going to have to go because it's only got two edges coming out of it, so it's got a uh, degree of 2, which is less than 3. Oops, looks like I moved one of those. There we go. And we can also see that this one down here, 12, is going to go. This has degree only 2, and so we will mark it red to be deleted. But what's interesting here is that vertex 5 now is also going to have to go because it lost one of its edges when 6 was deleted. So now vertex 5 has to go, and it turns out uh, that that's all the vertices that have to go. Uh, and we now have a subgraph of our original graph uh, in which all vertices have degree of at least 3. If we check number 1, for instance, it's got three vertices, uh, excuse, excuse me, three edges coming out of it. If we check number four, it's got three edges coming out of it. If we check any of these guys down here, number seven, number nine, 11, eight, 10, any of the remaining vertices have at least three edges coming out of them. That is, they have degree at least three. Okay, um, so this sort of analysis is what we want our algorithm to, to do. We want to be able to solve the problem of deleting the fewest number of vertices possible so that the resulting subgraph um, has vertices all of degree at least k, and again, in our example, k is 3. Okay, so let's talk about how we actually structure an algorithm that does that in the desired linear time. Again, we are looking for an algorithm that does our problem in linear time that is in O of m plus n time, where m is the number of edges and n is the number of vertices. So conveniently, uh, we have the code written out here already. And it's really going to rely on just these two functions, uh, kcore and check and delete. Uh, if you want to know why I'm calling this function kcore, uh, you can look up kcore on Google, but basically, uh, k core is the problem, the basically the problem that we are trying to solve in this number 520. Um, so our algorithm k core takes one, two, three arguments, uh, the first of which is the graph g that we're going to operate on. We're not going to modify that graph directly, uh, so we're going to call that const. Um, uh, it's all gonna, also going to take a graph uh, k graph pointer kc for k core. And this is going to be the variable into which we write our solution. Uh, so it's kind of an output argument. And then it's also going to take an integer k. And k is, as we mentioned, the minimum degree that each vertex can have uh, in our solution, in our subgraph. OK. So uh, the first few lines of code here within k core uh, just do a little, a little bit of setup. Um, we, we declare and initialize a. Um, a vertex, excuse me, a, an array, core degree, um, and core degree is going to contain the degree of each vertex of the graph initially. 
and then we also declare and initialize um, an array deleted uh, that will indicate to us whether each vertex is uh, has been deleted or not. Uh, but we assume that all of our vertices to start with have not been deleted. So uh, we set deleted for each vertex, each index value to be uh, false to start with. Okay, then we process each of our vertices in order from the beginning. So for in i equals one to the number of vertices, we are going to call this check and delete function. Now, uh, what does the check and delete function do? Okay, so we call uh, um, check and delete, for instance, on vertex number one, i equals one. So uh, check and delete has these five arguments. First, it takes uh, a vertex v on which to operate here, in this case, vertex number one. Uh, it takes a graph, which is this graph that we are working with here, uh, it takes pointers to uh, arrays degree and deleted, which are these arrays right here. And notice these are not mark marked const for check and delete because we may be modifying these uh, degrees and we may be marking certain vertices deleted as we go through this check and delete function. So the check and delete function starts by checking whether the degree of the vertex that we input, which in, again in this case is 1 to start with, uh, is less than k. So we check out the degree of vertex number 1. Hey, vertex number 1 has a degree of 3, and we can see on the graph that it has 3 edges here. And therefore, uh, this condition evaluates the false, which means that we skip over the body of this if block. And of course, the if block is the entirety of the check and delete function. So uh, the check and delete function does absolutely nothing if the degree of the vertex that we are checking is greater than or equal to k, which in this case is 3, right? Uh, so the check and delete function does nothing for vertex number 1. It also does nothing for uh, the next several vertices, right? Uh, so we increment the i's and check and delete each of the following vertices. Uh, we check and delete vertex 2, we check and delete vertex 3, and vertex 4 and vertex 5, but all of these have degrees that are greater than or equal to 3, so check and delete does nothing for them, until we get to i equals 6 in the for loop down here. At that point we are checking vertex 6, and vertex 6, we noticed before, has a degree of only 2, because it has two vertices coming out of it. So, uh, degree of vertex 6 is indeed less than our k value of 3, and then we check the other conjunct within our AND statement. Uh, we check to see whether <clears throat> uh, vertex 6 has been deleted. And lo and behold, vertex 6 has not been deleted. So not deleted for vertex 6 evaluates to true, which means the whole AND statement evaluates to true. And we proceed into the body of the IF block here. We start by setting deleted for vertex 6 to be true which makes sense because 6 has only two edges coming out of it. So it's going to need to be deleted. Deleted. I will mark it red and I will proceed to uh, check out the edges in the adjacency list for vertex 6. Now before I didn't comment on the structure of the, uh, the data structure that we are using to represent the graph, but we choose to use adjacency lists. Um, so this edges array right here um, contains uh, basically an, uh, a linked list for each index uh, of the edges uh, that we have coming out of the vertex at that index. Uh, so this linked list 8.5 here uh, tells me basically that we have two edges coming out of vertex 6, uh, the edge from 6 to 8, and also the edge from 6 to Five. So uh, we begin by uh, set, in in order to process those edges, we need a pointer, um, and that pointer p points initially to the first edge, which is the six eight edge right here, and that edge I will mark red because it's coming out of a now deleted vertex, vertex number six, um, and we're going to subtract one, decrement, the degree uh, of 
the vertex to which this particular edge points. And that vertex is vertex number eight. So I go to vertex number eight and I decrement its degree to be three. Because of course vertex eight no longer has access to this edge right here going to vertex six because vertex six is deleted. So there are three remaining edges coming out of vertex eight. And we check and delete vertex eight. But vertex eight has three edges still coming out of it. Therefore, check and delete does nothing for vertex eight. And we continue on to the next edge uh, that was adjacent to vertex six. All right, so the next edge in six's adjacency list was edge, uh, the edge going to vertex number five. That's this one right here. This one's going to be deleted also because vertex six is deleted. Notice that I don't actually mark that anywhere in the code. I'm just sort of marking it on our picture for visual purposes. Uh, I don't actually have to mark that anywhere in the code because I've marked six deleted and the code will take care of that uh, later on. So uh, I then decrement the degree of vertex five by one. Vertex five now has a degree of two and here we're going to run into an issue, of course, because when we run the check and delete, uh, vertex 5 now has a degree of less than 2, even though it didn't before when we checked on it the first time. So we need to run uh, the body of this if block uh, for vertex number 5, because the degree of vertex 5 is less than 3 and 5 is not yet deleted. So the first thing that we do is delete vertex 5. So we go over here and mark true in the deleted column or the deleted array for vertex five. And we'll represent that visually on the graph by marking it with uh, marking it red. And then we have to process each of the edges coming out of vertex five. So um, P again is our going to be our pointer to each of the edges in our linked list. Uh, we initialize it to be pointing at the first edge, uh, which is the edge from five to six. So we are looking at this edge right here and we decrement the degree of the vertex to which this edge points. Now here we're coming from five and it's pointing to vertex six right here. And vertex six is already deleted, right? But we're going to decrement its degree anyway, just because that's what the algorithm does. It wouldn't matter if we didn't do it, but for purposes of like easy clean code, we, leave, we, uh, we let it happen, that it decreases the degree of vertex six, um, and we move on to the check and delete part. Now, uh, we check and delete and discover that vertex six, although it has a degree of less than three, is already deleted. So then we don't have to proceed with uh, the, the if block for this particular call to check and delete of vertex six. So we return to uh, processing all the edges uh, adjacent to vertex 5. Um, we set our P, our temporary pointer, to be the next edge in vertex 5's adjacency list. Uh, we were just on the edge to vertex 6, now we're on the edge to vertex 7. So I'm going to mark this one red. And then uh, we subtract one from the degree of vertex 7. Degree of vertex seven is now three, which makes sense because we have these three edges coming out of vertex seven. That was this line of code right here. And now we want to check and delete vertex seven. Uh, so we push another call to check and delete onto the stack. Uh, and we check whether uh, the degree of vertex seven is less than K. It is not less than K, so we can skip over this if plot and exit our check and delete function and move right on to the next edge in five's adjacency list, which is the five to four edge. And I will mark that with red. So then we subtract one from the degree of vertex four. Degree of vertex four is now three, which makes perfectly good sense because we have one, two, three edges coming out of vertex four that have not been deleted, no longer counting this one. Uh, and we check and delete vertex four since vertex four has a degree of three, 
uh, then it's okay. Check and delete does nothing. We move on to the next uh, edge in five's adjacency list, but there are no more edges in five's adjacency lists. We just did number four, and that's the last one. So then we return to we return from the check and delete function called on vertex 5 to the check and delete function called uh, on vertex 6. We were right here in a call to this check and delete function where v was 6 and py was 5. This check and delete has now finished and so we move on to the next uh, the next edge in p's adjacency in vertex 6's adjacency list. Um, but there are no more edges left in vertex 6's adjacency list because we just did number 5. There aren't any left. So we are now finished with the, this call to check and delete for vertex 6 and we return uh, to the caller of that function which was this for loop right here in k core. Uh, so we were on i equals 6 we had just called uh, check and delete on that six, but that vertex number six, uh, and now we've returned from that, and the for loop continues. Um, we check next vertex seven, and vertex seven has a degree of three. That's okay, and we iterate through the for loop, uh, checking vertexes eight, nine, ten, eleven. Those are all okay until we get to vertex twelve, which has a degree of two. So the check and delete function for vertex 12, uh, <clears throat> we have to check, the, of course, the other uh, conjunct now of the and statement. We check to see whether 12 has been deleted. And it has not yet been deleted, which means we move into the body of the if block and go ahead and mark 12 as deleted. And we represent that visually on our picture by marking vertex red as uh, 12 is red. Uh, we'll mark those as we process them, actually, those edges. Uh, so we have deleted vertex 12. We set up a temporary pointer to point to the edge nodes in 12's adjacency list, uh, starting with number 11. So that is the edge pointing from 12 vertex 12 to vertex 11 right here. And now that we're looking at that, I will mark it red. I subtract one from the degree of the edge of the vertex to which edge 12, 11 points. That is, I subtract one from the degree of vertex 11. The degree of the vertex 11 is now 5, uh, excuse me, is now 4. Uh, and we can see that vertex 11 has four non deleted edges coming out of it. Uh, we check and delete um, vertex 11. But vertex 11 still has a degree of 4, which is greater than 3. So we're OK. We move on to the next edge in uh, vertex 12's adjacency list, which is uh, the 12 to 10 edge. Uh, so we decrement 10's degree according to this line of code right here. 10's degree is now 3. We check and delete 10, but 10 is OK because it has a degree of 3. Oops, I forgot to mark this edge deleted. <clears throat> so vertex 10 is all right, uh, which means the check and delete doesn't do anything. We move on to the next edge in number 12's adjacency list. But there are no more edges in number 12's adjacency list. So <clears throat> we go ahead and finish the call to check and delete for vertex 12 takes us back to this for loop here, <clears throat> but now the for loop exits because we just did the final vertex in the for loop. Uh, and at this point, we are basically done. Uh, that is, we have identified all of the edges and uh, vertices that need to be deleted from our original graph in order to end up with a maximal subgraph, all of whose vertices have degree at least three. Um, now, I haven't actually gone through the process of making a new graph yet, um, a new graph object in memory, uh, and that's what this subgraph function right here does. Uh, we won't go through the implementation of this function, but all it does is it takes an input of a graph g, this kc is an output argument that we will write our result to, and also an array deleted 
uh, of vertices in graph G to delete uh, and creates a new graph uh, consisting of the original graph but with all of the deleted vertices missing, right? All of the deleted vertices deleted and writes that to KC. Okay, so we've finished actually giving the algorithm and now all that remains is to explain why our algorithm runs in linear time that is time that is linear in the number of vertices plus the number of edges of the graph, or O of n plus n. First of all, we know it's going to be at least linear in the number of uh, vertices because we run this for loop right here, which executes once for every vertex in the graph and calls the check and delete function once for every vertex in the graph. But then what happens when we have this recursive call within the uh, check and delete function to itself? And how might we know how many times that recursive call is going to execute and how that's going to affect the runtime of our algorithm. Often recursive calls are difficult to deal with. We have to write down recurrence relations. Recurrence relations are difficult to solve. But in this case, we don't have to do that. I'm going to give an argument uh, that gives us a good upper bound on the number of times the check and delete function will run all together uh, for the entire algorithm. Uh, so let's think. How many times could the check and delete function run all together? Well, I only call check and delete from here uh, during this for loop, right? And I know how many times that's going to happen. That's going to happen exactly 12 times in this example. And here, within the while loop inside the check and delete function. Now this is the one that's tricky. And we say, okay, well, how many times might this while loop actually execute? Well, the while loop executes once for every edge that is in the adjacency list of a vertex that is being deleted, right? That hasn't yet been marked deleted, uh, but needs to be marked deleted. Uh, the first one we came across in the graph like that, for instance, was number six, uh, vertex number six. Um, so when we came across vertex number six, we looked at its uh, the edges adjacent to vertex number six, um, and we called check and delete on each of those edges. Now, within one of those calls to check and delete, right, we also had to run the while loop for vertex number five, right? Because vertex number five, after having deleted number six, uh, suddenly needed to be deleted. And so uh, we enter the body of this if block and we execute the while loop processing the edges for vertex number five. Um, and after we do that, we return to the while loop for vertex number six, and then the check and delete finishes for vertex number six. Question is, how do I know that I'm not going to do uh, process the edges for vertex number six and make these calls to check and delete more than once? Because it's possible that I could come across vertex number six at some point uh, later in the algorithm after this first call to check and delete six. Uh, that comes along while I am iterating through all the vertices, right? In particular, you notice that when we processed vertex number five, uh, one of the edges from number five pointed back to number six. But what happened at that point was that number six had already been marked deleted, right? So if vertex number six is already marked deleted, we don't execute this while loop that, uh, that uh, iterates through all of the edges adjacent to vertex number six. Because we don't have to execute this while loop again, that means that these edges for vertex number six will only be processed once during the entirety of our algorithm. And so on and so forth for all of the rest of the vertices in the graph. We will process all of their edges at most once. If we mark that edge, uh, if we mark that vertex deleted, then we will process its edges, and after that, we won't do it ever again. Which means that <clears throat> the number of times we call check and delete from in within this while loop is at most the total number of vertices that there are in the graph altogether. Excuse me, it's at most the total number of edges that there are in the graph altogether. So then the total number of calls to check and delete will be the number of vertices, 12, plus the number of edges, or at most the number of edges, which in this case is 20. All of these um, edges in this column here. And therefore, 
the running time of our algorithm is linear in the sum of the number of vertices and the number of edges.